Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be showing you five examples of using Array Reduce in JavaScript and these are gonna be uh, real life applications. Now the reason for creating this video is because a lot of Array Reduce examples online will typically only show the sum of all numbers example. Uh, that's including myself in the past. So I wanted to have a video that shows many different examples of using array reduce and it intends to be educational so if you didn't quite grasp it with using the numbers example uh, hopefully with this video you'll see different ways you can use array reduce okay let's jump into the list okay the first example today is going to be the sum of all numbers in an array now you can skip past this if you wish but the reason why i included this example is because there's a good chance someone watching this video has not used array reduce at all or very few times so i wanted to get the basics out of the way first um, I would say though, if you're new to the array reduce method, I recommend you watch my dedicated video on the topic because I'm going to be explaining it in that video a lot better than I am now. Okay, but just to go over this simple sum of all numbers example, we're going to be taking this array of numbers right here and reducing it down to a single value, the sum of all the numbers. So down here, we can define a new constant called results equal to numbers.reduce. Now, of course, this result is going to be the results of the reduce operation. Okay. The reduce method is going to take through a callback function with two parameters, um, the previous value and the current value, in this case here being a number. And the return result of this function is going to be uh, essentially what the previous value is the next time this function is executed because this function here runs for every single number in this array. Like I said, more detail on my dedicated video, but the initial value for this operation is gonna be a zero. We're gonna start from zero and count up, okay? Inside this function, we're going to return the previous value plus the number. So this here is the simplest example of using array reduce. I can now console.log what the result is, and we should see here in the console uh, 20 and we get 20 right there. So just quickly, this function runs for every single item inside the array, whatever the return result is for a particular execution, that's gonna be what the previous value is in the next iteration, which is why we're progressively counting up from zero to give us 20. Okay, this next example is where it gets interesting. So right here, I've got this array of materials that I used to build a house. So we've got things like brick, plaster, and wood. Now, each one of these items has its own cost associated with it. So much like the previous example, we want to find the total of all the materials which I used to build a house. So we're gonna be finding the sum, but this time we have to work with an object and not a plain number like we did previously. So down here, we're gonna say uh, const results once again, equal to materials.reduce. Now we're gonna be passing through the previous value just like that. Then we have a second argument for the material. So of course, material refers to one of these material objects. Okay, now like last time, the starting value is gonna be a zero. And inside this method now, or sorry, inside this function, we're gonna simply return the previous value plus material.cost. So this is just demonstrating that you can of course apply the array reduce method to an array of objects. And if you want to access the property inside there, you just say, okay, cool, object.cost cost to access each individual cost. I'll now console.log the results and we should get about 10,000 or so or 100,000 or so. I'll run the code and we get 104,000. So you can see there, like I said, basically just looping over an array of objects and applying the reduce method um, onto a single property there, cost. Now this next example is something that I've done plenty of times. It's basically just converting a two-dimensional array of key value pairs into 
a JavaScript object. Now, I've done this before when dealing with uh, query strings. If I wanna take a query string uh, that happens to be in the format of a two-dimensional array, then convert it into an object, I've done it using this technique. So, we've got these key value pairs here, username decode, member since 2020 in April, and an age of 35. So, let's hop down here and convert this into an object. We can simply say const results equal to, then we can just say, look, key value pairs dot reduce, and then, like usual, take in that previous value, the current value is gonna be the key value pair, and it's gonna essentially begin with an object, okay? Now, this right here is gonna be a little bit tricky because, well, not tricky, but a little bit different because objects work by reference, whereas uh, the previous examples showed a numeric, which is obviously, uh, you know, uh, copied by value and so on, but um, it's not too complicated. So, if I hop down here, I now want to essentially uh, take this object and add properties to it. So right here, I'm gonna say const key is equal to key value pair at index zero. So each array item, index zero is gonna be the key. And of course, index one is gonna be the value. So I can do that right there, okay? Now let's assign that property to the object. I'll say previous, then I'll say key, is equal to the value. Now, theoretically, this right here is complete because, well, it's not complete, but it might still work because look, I'm assigning a property to an object and like I said, since the object is already existing, um, if I had access to this object here, outside of this, uh, you know, reduce method, then it'll be done, right? But I'm gonna return it anyway for consistency. So I'll say return previous. Hope that made sense. If not, don't worry, uh, we're still returning the object right there. So next time it runs, we can access it. I can now say console.log the results. I'll execute this code, example three, and we get an object of our key value pairs. Next up, we've got a list of people. Now, these people have a name, occupation, and salary. So, we wanna use array reduce to find the highest salary in this list, okay? So, we, of course, do expect the mechanic to have the highest salary, as we can see right here, 150,000, all right? Now let's hop down here and use array reduce to do just that. So this performs or this works in a similar way to the math.max uh, uh, function if you've used it before, but let's hop down here and just say const result is equal to people.reduce, taking in that accumulator or that previous value once again, and each person. Now the starting value is gonna be a zero, okay? And now within this function, we're gonna have to do a test, okay? We have to we have to see, look, is the current person's salary more than what we previously had recorded as the most, okay? If it is, then let's update that previous value to be the new higher salary. So right here, we're gonna say, look, if person.salary is more than the previous highest recorded salary, we can say return, person.salary as the new highest. Otherwise, we can return the previous value as per normal, so of course, carry that across. So the first time this runs, it's gonna receive zero in the previous uh, argument, and person is gonna be me, Dom, right? So if me, if my salary is more than zero, then make the new highest, my salary, right? So that's how we're able to, you know, figure out what the max salary is. I can now console.log the results, okay? I'll run this code here and example four and we get 150,000 right down there. Now, if you wanted to, you could even uh, return the actual object itself if you wanted to, right? But in this case, yeah, I just want the salary, which is why I got the numeric value right there. The last example today involves taking an array of strings and then finding the number of occurrences for each string in that array.
So right here, I've got this array of colors and I expect to see a count of two for green, a count of three for red and blue will be one. So I wanna have an object which has each color as a key and its value is gonna be the number of occurrences in this array. So right here, we're gonna say const result equal to uh, colors dot reduce once again, taking in that previous value and the color. And the starting uh, value here is gonna be an object just like we saw in uh, a previous example. So what's gonna happen here is basically we need to say, okay, we're looping through this array. So the first time this loops through, we have uh, green as the color. So we need to add the green property to this object, okay? So right here, we're gonna say previous and then color is equal to. So what is green equal to? Well, this is the first time we've seen the color of green. So we're gonna surround this in brackets and we're gonna say, cool, previous and then color or zero, okay? So right here we're saying, if, if green was seen before and it's got a value in there, then use that value. So for example, if green had a count of two before this function executes, then this right here is gonna give us two or if it's the first time we're seeing the color of green, give it a value of zero. Then we're gonna say plus one. So whatever this is, plus one. This zero basically just guarantees that the key exists in the object. Then we'll just say, cool, that's fine. Return the previous value. In this case here, of course, the object. I can now say console.log the results. I'll run this and we get here green two, red three and blue one. So that right there is quite a useful example, quite a unique example of using the array reduce method to find the total number of occurrences of a string inside an array. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested, I am now uploading courses onto Udemy. So you can find my uh, courses linked down below, including the JavaScript DOM crash course uh, for building your DOM skills. And that is all. I will see you in the next video.